Now recognize Mr. Menendez. I think you're up next, sir. Thank the you, gentleman from New Jersey for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director Ray, earlier in your testimony, did you say that defunding the FBI would be, quote, a gift to the Chinese Communist Party, quote, more power to the cartels, and quote, more damage to critical infrastructure? I believe I said words to that effect, yes. I appreciate that. Not everybody was in the room during that part of your testimony. Uh, I want to follow up on what my colleague, Mr. Higgins, said about, quote, armed oppression as one of the primary threats to the homeland. I agree that armed oppression is a massive threat to our homeland, but we need to be clear about what actually constitutes armed oppression. In this country, minority groups are routinely targets of weaponized oppression. Armed oppression is when black men cannot go safely for a run in Georgia. Armed oppression is when black youth cannot wear hoodies in Florida. Armed oppression is being LGBTQ in this country and not being able to safely go to a nightclub in Florida. Armed oppression is living in a Hispanic community and being targeted while going to Walmart in El Paso. Armed oppression is being black in this country and not being able to go grocery shopping in Buffalo without being targeted because of the color of your skin. Armed oppression is not being able to go safely to a church, synagogue, mosque, temple, or any place of worship to practice your faith. Domestic terrorists have targeted each of these locations and each of these groups in acts of armed oppression. Yet, when we in the House Committee on Homeland Security established our committee oversight plan for the 118th Congress, my Republican colleagues refused to include capital D, capital D, domestic terrorism in our plan. That, in my opinion, is where this committee is failing when we consider our threats to the homeland. New Jersey's 8th Congressional District is home to what homeland security experts call the most dangerous two miles in America, containing ports, airports, major rail lines, densely populated cities, and chemical plants. I'm proud of the work that President Biden and the New Jersey Congressional Delegation have done to improve the safety, reliability, and resiliency of critical infrastructure in North Jersey. The Biden administration has aggressively protected our critical infrastructure from foreign adversaries, with President Biden admonishing Russian President Vladimir Putin that certain critical infrastructure is off limits, a stark contrast to President Trump, who proposed a joint cyber unit with Russia. Secretary Mayorkas, when considering the threat landscape, how does the department take into account the risk posed by having multiple critical infrastructure sectors in close geographic proximity? Uh, Congressman, uh, the proximity of elements of our critical infrastructure only increase uh, the challenge that we confront, but we work very, very closely with our critical infrastructure partners. The great majority of this country's critical infrastructure rests in the hands of the private sector. We work very closely with the private sector to ensure the security of our critical infrastructure. The remarkable men and women of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency do a tremendous job. And on the issue of cybersecurity, I want to address the current threat landscape. When we talk about cybersecurity, we're talking about threats that don't just come up from nation states like Iran, but often from a network of proxies and affiliated groups. Secretary Mayorkas, how is the current conflict in Israel giving us additional insight about Iranian-backed cyber threat actors? I'm sorry, can you repeat the... Of course. Just how is the current conflict in Israel giving us additional insight about Iranian-backed cyber threat actors? I think what we are uh, seeing, uh, Congressman, and I'll... Uh, defer to my colleagues uh, as well as um, the use of cyber as a tool uh, in the repertoire of our adversaries. And we're seeing that play out in the Middle East con uh, conflict, just as we have seen it in the context of the unprovoked Russian aggression against Ukraine. I appreciate that. One more question for you. In your testimony, you mentioned how critical it is that, CFATS, that the CFATS program is reauthorized. I'm particularly invested in the CFATS program because there are four facilities covered by the program in New Jersey's 8th Congressional District. How does the CFATS program help keep our critical infrastructure safe? Congressman, uh, the CFATS program, the Chemical Facilities Anti-Terrorism Standards, allow us to inspect facilities to ensure adherence with the security and safety precautions that are necessary to protect the surrounding communities. That is one aspect of CFATS. We must achieve the reauthorization of that program. I agree. I just want to quickly uh, address some of the ways that my colleagues have attacked, attacked Secretary Mayorkas here and in other hearings. Mr. Secretary, you and I have had our disagreements on policies, including recently on an ICE detention center in Elizabeth in my district, and I'm looking forward to your department's response to my letter on that. But I have two quick questions for you. 
During your long career in public service, including 30 years as a law enforcement official and senior positions in the Department of Homeland Security under the Obama administration, did you take your responsibility to the American public seriously? I have and I continue to do so. Congress. When President Biden asked you to serve as Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, did you accept to help keep the American people safe? I did, Congressman. Is that what you focus on every single day when you wake up to take this office? It indeed is. Thank you so much for your service, sir. I yield back. The gentleman yields. I now recognize Mr. D. Esposito, the gentleman.